Good morning, everybody. It is 7.30 in the morning on this very rainy day of May 8, 2018. And uh, right now I'm just taking a peek at, <clears throat> looking at uh, the, the uh, cryptocurrency market, looking at Bitcoin right now because it's sitting at kind of an important uh, zone uh, relative to its overall trend. Uh, we may see some type of, of pullback here. We'll see if this upwards trend line is going to hold or not. Um, certainly the previous line we've been looking at was here to here. And so very possible for us to test at this angle here and then bounce um, more. It's a, it's a very probable kind of direction for us to look so we're testing that upwards line and now we're going to probably go down and test this lower bound line just kind of keeping an eye <clears throat> an eye on that as we're moving into our morning you know we've had some moves you know if we look at if we look at our list of of, of the forex currencies that we're watching we see a lot of uh, a lot of different um really kind of odd current positions and and the like it's a very kind of I guess different um, setup we've got going here one moment All right, let's take a peek at these markets. So we had yesterday, we had a few trades um, that we were taking a look at. And let's go ahead and take a peek at gold right now. Gold. I'm trying to get the WhatsApp to come up, it should. There it is, okay. Okay, so we had a few ideas. So we wanted to go short at 1309 yesterday with gold. That did work out just for a tiny bit. We hit it and then we just kind of been ping ponging around here. Notice how price bounced off of this arc. Okay, observe how that has acted as a support area. Observe how this angle here has acted as resistance. And we're still looking at lower prices and a lower drive down. Right, this is just this is just a bear flag, and so it's um, until we break above really this thirteen twenty six twenty four, we're going to be looking at. Oh my gosh, I really hate how this is all sorts of messed up. Ugh, it ruins a whole analysis but we're pretty much in the same kind of zone. We've had a nice rejection off of this angle and we continue to fall lower. That is the most probable condition for the day. Um, if we take a look at, let's see, if we wanna take a look at our euro trade euro's been a good one we wanted to short on a pullback to 119.65 we did not get there in fact all we did was we continued to fall down lower now we are at an important kind of a zone here we're on this 45 and that sh that we're expecting that to hold as a certain type of support level on the hourly we have some uh, divergence here so be on the lookout for that um the UJ trade yesterday, we wanted to go short at 109.24. That worked out nicely, very nicely. And we're kind of hovering here. I'd cover that position because we're resting on this 45. So in both of these squares of both of these, these uh, uh, structures, the Euro is on its 45 now and the, the dollar yen is on its 45. 
pound dollar we wanted to go long at 135.5 that did not pan out we've actually continued to fall down lower it looks like we're basing for maybe pushing another lower low here so be on the watch out for that we wanted to go short on the aussie dollar that worked out beautifully at 74.88 that has worked out very nicely we're continuing to trade below the 75 value area that is very bearish that is very bearish for the aussie dollar us dollar and then the New Zealand dollar, we wanted to go long at at seven, seven uh, at seventy oh eight. That trade did not manifest, and we are trading below this arc, so we have some bearish conditions again on the setup here. So looking at the day, we we see we're continuing to make lower lows in a lot of these prices, but it's about the time that we start talking is about the time when things are starting to just start a little bit of a pullback in some of these. So instead of taking the inverse direction, we're going to wait for some pullbacks. So on the New Zealand dollars, I'm looking at this chart. Uh, if we go to the daily, you know, we are looking pretty ugly here. <laughs> um, and we're continuing to drive down lower. All right, continuing to drive and push this market lower and not looking at really any signs of of any kind of recovery in fact on the daily shorting at this area seems to make sense because our next real support zone is well below here all right um, you know if we're looking in between these inner well between the major and then like we don't have it listed here but right here would be our first kind of oversold condition um, you know we're just looking at any kind of direction that may offer a pullback and you know right now instead of trying to anticipate when it's gonna happen we're just gonna have to wait all right so really no trade on the New Zealand dollar I'm looking at the Aussie dollar <clears throat> real big push down lower below the 75 handle that is a that is a very bearish condition if we get a pullback today we should consider entertaining a short now on the daily we are we are hovering around in this oversold condition which is fine that is fine we can stay in oversold for a while in fact we can if we pull up you know the stochastic rsi you know the it's a little bit more sensitive on telling us when something's going to to bounce or not on the stochastic rsi we see that we are in a supportive buying condition but it doesn't really matter because we're still in the same oversold areas so really no uh, uh long opportunity there especially in the composite index when we're indicating we're going to move lower again um looking at the pound dollar pound dollar similar scenario where we're at this zone where we're resting on this arc and we're, we're observing this bullish divergence here happening on the daily but it's not showing any signs of of wanting to turn and and it you know in addition on the rsi if we look at this it's continuing to drive lower it's below 30 and and sloping lower there too uh, so we so we may continue to drive lower here on the daily the dollar yen on the uh, on the daily you know it looks like we're, we're kind of um, got a little bit of a I don't know what you want to call it not sure the design but we're finding a lot of buying still look at all these buying tails every time price is kind of dropped we're, we're continuing to make some higher lows here and you could say some lower highs, but we're we're still above the, the 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 45. I'm sorry, this was not the 45. This is a one by two, but this is the 45 down here. And we're still we're still well above that. Um, the euro continuing to be pretty bearish. I'm actually honestly surprised at the at the uh, at the, the the violent move we've had here and and how dramatic the drive down has been um without a lot of real any any kind of supportive 
participation to to drive us higher you know it's it's a very interesting it's a very interesting kind of zone that we're in all right there's a strong condition for some support and some buying back here however you know because if we look at think about it here's this arc here or this angle here here's this angle you know this has acted as a resistance zone bank resistance angle this should be acting as a support but certainly there's nothing saying that we can't just fall through so keep our eyes on that let's look at the gold trade on the daily gold continuing to look pretty bearish i'm still pretty bearish on gold i don't see any reason why we would entertain a a move to the top side when we're still very uh, much in the sell mode here I'm trying to get those evened out oh ugh, dang it Point two six point two four. That one's over there for some reason. Oops. There we go. So looking at the gold chart on the daily, um, pretty good bias for continuing lower because we faced, we, we, we obviously have rejection. I can see the wick there. Yeah, this is a pivot setup, pivot candlestick setup. So we are definitely anticipating lower drives and lower moves because we got rejected at this angle. And so we should anticipate lower moves. We're at a pivot in time as well. So you know, a drive lower today and tomorrow should really indicate a, a good um, a good bias for a continuance in the lower lower prices. You know, we're not um, in oversold territory on the RSI, but in the composite index, we are indicating a, a good level to short at. All right, um, taking a look over at. Let's see here. One moment. I've got, to, I've got to probably place a trade here. <clears throat> and Alrighty. Okay, let's take a look. Continuing. Um, where are we at? Ha. Aha. Uh -huh. Euro. Let's take a look here. Price scale, auto scale. Let's go down to the hourly. So we are sitting right above the 45 we're looking like we're supportive on some type of pullback so we should maybe look at if we get a pullback to 119.01 maybe that would be well you know what no not no trade on the euro um the dollar yen 
so this is this will be a good long setup if we can get back above 109.4 so long at a return and hold above 109.4 on the the euro no, no sorry not the euro the pound dollar um certainly if we're not short already then we want to entertain a short on a break and hold below this low here um well we'll save the low on the daily probably well you know what actually present value area is not bad if we're gonna assume it's gonna be short at 1.3503 and you know our risk is very limited to about up there, so we're not um, in a very risky trade setup here. If we go ahead and take a peek at the U.S. dollar, Canadian dollar, really nice drive up here. We were talking about this yesterday on how this zone, you know, when we when when we get a huge drive up or down, and then we see kind of a, a flattening or a planing. Uh, and a consolidation zone that is neither up nor down. It's not showing a, a flag or a pennant or any change in direction. It usually just means we're resting before we get the next drive higher. And that is exactly what we've had happen here on the U.S. dollar, Canadian dollar. Now, there is some oil news coming out, I believe, at, what is that, uh, 8, 8 o'clock, 8, 8, no, sorry, I'm way off, 3, 3.30. The news coming out at 755 is red book um, for the dollar. The Aussie dollar, US dollar, if we take a look, trying to determine where we could probably re enter short. Uh, we're probably ha having to look at a return to that 75 zone. So 7490 would, would more than likely be a good short area. Short at pullback 2.5. 749. You know, let's put the Ichimoku on here and see what we got going on. Ichimoku. Oh, yeah. Nice, nice break out there. I forgot to turn my Ichimoku on. I like to use the Ichimoku along with my market geometry. I think it, I think it provides a pretty nice um, look and view of a, of a market, a unique approach New Zealand dollar let's take a look we had some more follow through on the New Zealand dollar more dropping uh, where's our four hour cloud and our eight hour cloud oh yeah continuing to drive lower uh, so you know the pullback area is right where this baseline is at so you know on the New Zealand dollar any pullback really to well 0 0.07 0 0.7 zone That's where we're looking. Um, what about, let's check out gold one more time. So gold, yeah, we, we have technically gone back below the cloud and the, the lagging span is below the cloud and we're getting strength on these dollar pairs. So, you're, you know, we're still below price, we're below the cloud we got all of our conditions met for a short, so, you know, really, XAUUSD short at our real value here is thir at 1311.19. That is our short. Gold really wanting and struggling to stay in a positive value area, but we can see that it, that it is flagging on the daily chart on the hourlies we have a, a very nice bear flag forming and there's a lot of a lot of attempt to try and drive this higher but it keeps getting rejected you know we th this could be turning into some base consolidation zone for gold where where gold may have a rally but you know really not seeing any signs of that at the moment Let's observe what we've got going on with our, let's take a quick look at cryptos again, Bitcoin. Okay, it is finding support on this angle. So there's been a lot of news in, um, 
well, I guess, yeah, cryptocurrency is obviously in the news, but uh, specifically Ethereum has been in the news and has gotten a little flack because um, there, there's a class action lawsuit against Ethereum. And the, the, uh, the suit alleges that Ethereum, when it, when it did its ICO, which is an initial coin offering, it alleges that it did a illegal security sale, an unregistered sale of securities. Now, I, uh, a security essentially, the difference between a, uh, a cryptocurrency token and a security is that a security is something that you buy that is part of an entity that, that essentially says that this is going to uh, generate a return for you. That's not the specific definition, but it is, you know, for lack of a better way to describe it, that is what's going on here. So there, there is a gentleman on California who is suing because he says that Ethereum is technically acting as it, it had an, un, an illegal sale. And so it has to register as a security. Now, the, the, the obviously the founders and the owners or not owners but the the big wigs at ethereum say they are not a security and even the sec one of the sec big wigs says that it's not a security now if ethereum does end up being labeled as a security then we've got some issues with ethereum okay um another coin that is suffering the same kind of blowback and and more specifically is Ripple. Now, Ripple, I've always hated Ripple. I've never liked Ripple. I've always thought Ripple was a scam. And Ripple is being sued as well because they just keep making, you know, and they are, in a way, a security. The difference between, like, Ripple and Ethereum and Bitcoin and a lot of other cryptocurrencies is that you cannot mine Ripple. Ripple has a set amount that who knows what the actual float, like, if you're trading stocks, you know, each stock has a certain amount of float, they call it. That's how many shares are available for, for buying and selling. Um, nobody knows what the actual float is for Ripple because there's billions of Ripple tokens just lying around somewhere waiting to uh, inflate the market. And and Ripple, you can't mine. It, it, it's, it has a set amount. And so that sounds more like a security because Ripple is also... Uh, without getting into it any further, Ripple sucks. So looking at the rest of our our, our markets here, let's take a little quick rundown. Gold, um, gold finding a little weakness now, falling off of that little high we had earlier. So gold finding some weakness. Gold could could drop quite a bit here, guys. I mean, we're I'm, I mean we could we could really have a big fallout here, uh, a real big one. The euro, wow, I mean, even going lower, gee whiz, this is just nuts. I mean, I <laughs> I tell you these these uh, continuing moves of lower lows and all of these prices is uh, it's making trading fairly easy and. Um, you know, there's no no sign or and change of direction in sight. We are just continuing to see a capitulation in the price action of of a lot of these dollar pairs that have experienced, you know, in something like the pound over a year and a half of growth. Pound dollar sitting right at that 135.0, and looks like we may break that. Um, yeah, we gotta watch what happens here if we I mean we're in a we're in a all the classic conditions set up for a short opportunity and on the Ichimoku system and we're sitting right on a key support zone in our arc, but it it does not look like it's going to hold, folks. It looks like it's going to um Okay. Chrome, quit being slow. It really looks like we're going to have a pretty Another another big drive down, another leg down here. U.S. dollar, Canadian dollar, uh, just kind of floating up there. Aussie dollar, U.S. dollar, continuing to show weakness. I mean, this this guy has just we've gone from seventy eight 
to 75. I mean, it doesn't seem like a lot. It's 300 some pips, but that's a that's a big chunk of the value of uh, uh, of the Aussie dollar US dollar. That's how big of a drive down is that? Let's see here. If we go from this swing high to where we are now, 4.69% drop. <clears throat> that's a that's a big drop. That's a big drop in crypto. I mean, that's a big drop in current regular currencies in, in Forex. It's not a big drop in cryptocurrencies. Um, it's a big drop there. New Zealand dollar, just kind of hovering there. Take a peek at the euro again. Maybe finding a little bit of support. Gold, still showing weakness. Look at the dollar yen. You might end up in positive territory here. Now, looking at the Ichimoku, you know, we're, we're not looking. I mean, we have one condition met for um, going long, and that is the cloud above us is green, in front of us is green. Otherwise, on the Ichimoku system, we would not take long yet. Why? Because price is inside the cloud. That's the first sign that we don't take a trade in the Ichimoku system. Although, um, trading only the Ichimoku system you would not take a trade. But I like to use the Ichimoku system in conjunction at times with my own market geometry uh, as another kind of confirmation signal. Certainly, if I see price is going to break out of the cloud somewhere and have all the conditions met for a long opportunity and we're about to break and we're at or above a certain important angle, I'm going to go long even if all the conditions in the Ichimoku system are not met. Um, however, the, the, uh, situation right here is still, uh, bullish on the long run, but we're looking neutral in the, uh, on the Ichimoku at the moment. So keep an eye on this as we are looking forward and in, in the, in time here, finding a base at 109 is certainly what has been happening on the dollar yen. And we should anticipate that base to hold and and possibly move higher here. You know, Tuesdays are, are typically, they call it Tuesdays are turnaround Tuesdays where you finally see, like, Tuesdays sometimes set the direction and the move of the market for the week. So that is, that is kind of what we're hoping to see here is a is an indication that we're going to continue these trends. And it certainly looks like that that would be the case. You know, especially if the pound is down almost half a percent again. You know, if we want to uh, look at a, a market that's moved quite a bit, what is the percent drive of the pound? Ooh, 7%, guys. Or negative, negative 6.9%. Oh, man, is that not nice? Look at that. How many pips have we gone down? We have gone down almost 900 pips in 18 days, 17 days. 900 pips in 17 days. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Really like to see that. Very nice. Hmm. Cool. That is pretty sweet. Awesome, awesome. Okay, let's look at one more time or not. Yeah. Those are pretty much our trades, folks. I mean, we're not really seeing anything else that is drastic. And the dollar's catching a big bit here. Look at this. Man, I, I tell you, this dollar index is just on a tear. I, I mean, we are, uh, we, you know, the, the here's the big thing is we've got this, we've got a few trend lines here that we're looking at depending on how you want to look at them. But on this long-term one, man, we have, we're, we're beyond it. We broke above it, we're holding above it. Now we're and, and, and starting another leg up. I mean, the the we're at this pivot. We're getting to this pivot at 93.17. Although, you know, I don't know how much of a relevance that is. I know every chart has its own, damn it, why did it do that? 
uh, every chart has its own kind of method and rhythm and you know we we look for by the way this broke out on the daily this is a beautiful Ichimoku chart you know we're we're um, at this pivot but I mean the the dollar index itself is not an instrument unto itself it's not I don't know how much GANs you know um, approach as far as the heartbeat and the rhythm and the and the, the the entity itself how much that applies to this because the dollar index is just an index of it's a comparison of a basket of currencies against the dollar now there are other things like in general like like ETFs are indexes and you can trade those with with GAN theory so so possibly just talking about it like this is that the the dollar index is yeah we could say yeah this is a this is a instrument unto itself it's a chart unto itself and certainly we are seeing it, it trade pretty pretty fantastic um, really no not showing any signs of weakness up against this 9317 pivot uh, we're pro we may just we may as well just blow right above it and you know we have wiped out I mean we're bullish we're bullish on the year now okay because we are above the the high of the year well wait are we let me see here yeah we're above the previous high of the year okay so we are in bullish territory at the moment with the dollar index we look at the let's, let's kind of go down our list here taking a peek at gold where was gold at the beginning of the year we're kind of hovering near that support zone for gold as far as if we're going to break below it uh, we're we're definitely going to break below the the low of the year we're below the high we're testing the low we're we're most most definitely going to break below that the euro i mean what do you want to say uh the euro is in just a straight up sell-off mode the low of the year prior to this in january is that 119.18 and we are we are uh 50 pips below that now pretty bearish uh setup we we've essentially i mean like on the euro okay you think you just think about this for a second how fast this move has happened from january all the way up to let's let's do this let's see here's our low in january 109 that's the low of the year all the way over to where was our most recent swing high well we'll just say the swing high before we drop down was uh so we had 100 days exactly 100 days of price action where we made 484 pips well we could say there was a 640 pip gain and and then we consolidated and just think of it, about it this way we have wiped out an entire year's worth of price action okay an entire year's worth of price action has been wiped out all of the gains of the year have been wiped out in a matter of 19 days all right now technically from that low in january to the high that was what 600 and 600 some pips six maybe it was 640 um yeah 640 so we're we've retraced <laughs> uh, uh, a 
crap ton of, of, of pips. I, I mean, it's 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 pretty it's it's pretty awesome when you're looking at this. You know, what does the four day cloud look like? Okay, we're still above the four day cloud. And the eight day. Well, let's look at the weekly chart. What does this look like? Ichimoku on the weekly. We're still above the cloud on the weekly. So definitely, as we approach the top of the cloud here. We should see some bouncing activity, but uh, keep our eyes out. Keep our eyes peeled. Yeah, we're getting close to this 45. And, and it, oh, man, I don't know if price is going to. I've got a full lot open on the MAM account on the Euro. And I've got 10 pips on it. And I'm going to take it. I'm going to take that profit just because. If we break lower, I'm, I'm going to assume we're going to see a pullback back to that 45. Oh, damn it. It's going to keep going, isn't it? Boo, boo, boo. Oh, well. I've got other trades open that are in profit. That's okay. Yeah, it is going to want to move lower, isn't it? Dollar yen. Nice drive coming. Pound dollar looking very weak, very very weak. We should see we should see a we should see a pretty big drive down. We're yeah, I mean we're 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 looking at a pretty good drive down here. Aussie dollar continuing to 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 throw down as well, man. This is the importance of getting into these moves early, folks. I mean we have been, we have we have really been in the the trades very nicely. Over the last month, we've had some phenomenal trades, and you know this trend is is strong. This downtrend is strong. I mean, we're we're continuing to watch it form, and we're continuing to watch it develop. And what we're witnessing on the Aussie dollar is is a big deal. I want us to take a look at this on the monthly. Um, -dum -dum. There is a trend line here that we have broken down below. And so there is a whole lot of nothing below us. I want you to take a look at this volume profile too. Our present value area between... This is the entire history of the Aussie dollar, US dollar pair. There is nothing between where it's at. This is the, 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 the volume continues to draw down here. All right, we continue to see less and less participation. And so how prices react in when you're looking at, this is called volume at price. This is a volume profile, but, but really what this, this style of analysis is called volume at price. And the, 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 the key things we want to look at are the high volume nodes and the low volume nodes. Or I call them volume deserts. So areas where you see these high volume nodes, which are these, these, these longer extensions of, of price, this is where you're going to see a lot of accumulation and support and resistance in these bands. And areas where there's not, when price approaches it, it's very easy for price to travel below. We can see that right here. All right, as price was getting lower into this and breaking these zones, it moved very quickly lower because there's there's nothing there. This is like a vacuum. It gets sucked into it. And so what we're observing here is that we could see. We could see. A 10 percent drop from the present value area in the Aussie dollar. I mean, it is it is that it is that dangerous. It's about this is probably the bear, one of the most bearish charts I have ever seen. I I mean, this is just 
Did I do it? I, I want to feel smart. Did I do an idea on this? Oh, hell yeah, I did. Boom shakalaka. That's, uh... <laughs> wow. Just, I don't, man. That is, that is a, that is a crazy drive down that we, we, we may experience. And... Damn it! I want to get back into this because we're we're not in this one right now. But I mean, it's there. There's really nothing below it. I mean, there's we we're gonna have to wait for a pullback. I hate to enter in at the bottoms here because that's just that's just what amateurs do. Well, I mean, there's most amateurs always sell at the bottom and buy at the top. But I mean, we're we're looking at a structure in in past price action where there's nothing below us it is a it is a scary chart if you are a bull of the Aussie dollar US dollar it is a scary chart and we are in full bear mode on this chart and and literally we've only begun I mean guys we took the trades way up here to short and we've been shorting all the way down and and only just now is this a turning into a, a bear market so again i gotta stress that the importance of gans work the importance of gans analysis and applying the dates and the counts and all of that jazz you get to get in early in a move and you get to activate the majority of the profit and take it before everybody else catches on because i tell you what on trading view people post ideas and i follow all the forex pairs and i follow all of the the uh the uh uh major crypto pairs and i tell you what this pound dollar short that i did back in april 14th almost a month ago all right we were short on this all the way down and then two weeks later i started getting all these notifications of people posting shorts on the pound after the move had already happened and so this is the power of gans work is that we get to see and do things earlier than 98% of the other traders out there. And that is a powerful, powerful tool for us to have. And you know, when I'm looking at this, we got to look at all, we got to look at all of these pairs and I'm, I'm going to cut you guys up, cut you guys here in just, this, just a minute or two. But when we're looking at all of these pairs, most of these dollar pairs, the dollar is gaining a bunch of strength. It's been down for almost two years. And anything that's attached to the dollar is going to suffer. So anything, any chart on daily, weekly, or monthly that is currently lagging, what I mean is it's not moving the same as the other dollar pairs, those are opportunities. The Aussie dollar is, is currently kind of leading the charge lower. So is the pound dollar. And so is the euro dollar. What? Dang it. Man, we're missing out. Uh, maybe it bounced a little bit on the 45. What chart is lagging? What dollar pair is lagging? Gold. Gold is the laggard. And so this XAU USD pair, this has way farther to go down compared to a lot of the other pairs all right anyways keep your eyes out on these markets we have some great trades <clears throat> and you know we, we're going to continue to take these trades in these trends until there's there's something that says to the contrary tomorrow we're going to start we're going to have to start counting off our days here because you know Uh, let's see here. Let's go to the pound dollar real quick. Let's see what we have going on here. We got to start counting our days from these moves because you know we want to make sure that we don't get to caught in tunnel vision. So we're at 14 bars. We're at 20 days. Uh, tomorrow's going to be 21 days. 
that's that's uh, often a that can be a turning area, but ultimately, you know, we're looking forward to the 49 day cycle. That is the death zone. We we be looking out for that as we're as we're continuing into our trades here. Um, anyways, yeah, I think we're, we're gonna have again we're gonna have a great fantastic week. We're we're into some great trades already. We're observing the total capitulation of a lot of these markets that have been trending. We've been trading against those markets for a while, and that has worked out beautifully. And, yeah, I mean, you guys have a great trading day today. Have a good rest of your trading week, and I will visit with you tomorrow. Bye-bye.